Okay guys, you should have had a clean piece of notebook paper. Go ahead and get it titled and dated. And we are going to be comparing rational and irrational numbers today. <laughs> All right. So first things first is to review um, what signs we use to compare numbers. So hopefully you remember how to compare numbers from years past. Okay, we use three different signs. Okay, these are the three different signs we can use. This one is going to be the less than sign. Okay, remember, one way that I remember the difference between less than and more than is if the little arrow or the point is towards the left, then it's less. Left, less, starts with the same letter. If it points to the right, it's going to be more than or greater than. And then, of course, the equal sign means equal to. You might have been taught that the alligator mouth, like this is an alligator mouth or this is a Pac-Man, and that always is going to eat the bigger number. Whichever way you choose to remember it, pick a method to remember it and stick with that. Okay? So we're just going to go through a few different examples. So square root of 36 and 6.2. Okay? The first thing that we have to do, so step one, is we have to change all the numbers to decimals or evaluate them. So what I mean by that is I might not know what the square root of 36 is right off the top of my head. So I have to take that and punch it into the calculator so that I know exactly what the square root of, three, of 36 actually is. So we should all know how to punch in a square root at this point. So you hit the second button, hit the x squared button, type in 36. So 36 is the same thing as 6. So when I'm comparing these two numbers, I'm actually going to compare 6 to 6.2. So 6 is a whole number and 6.2 is a decimal. But technically, there's a decimal behind that 6. Every whole number has a decimal. And since there's no numbers, we can always fill in with zeros. So 6 is the same thing as 6.0. So since these two numbers have 6 in the same spot, we have to look at this second number to compare them. Okay. Is 0 bigger than 2? No. So square root of 36 is going to be less than 6.2. Or the alligator is going to eat the bigger number. So the alligator mouth is going to eat the 6.2. So the square root of 36 is less than 6.2. Let's look at another one. All right, so we have the negative square root of 3, and we have negative 1. So negative 1 has already been evaluated. But I have to evaluate the negative square root of 3. So when I type that in, I get negative 1.732, and then there's more numbers. But I'm probably okay to just write down the um, three numbers and leave it at that. If I need more, I can go back and figure that out. So then this negative 1, we can add zeros to it if you want to. Now negative numbers are kind of tricky when it comes to which ones are bigger and which ones are smaller. You can always think of it on a number line. So if I have the number negative 1, if I put negative 1.0, that's going to be right here. This is where negative 1 is. And then negative 1.7, it's not quite to negative 2. 
So which one is bigger? Remember, if it's closer to zero on the negative side, it's going to be bigger. So since negative one is closer to zero on the negative side, negative one is going to be bigger than negative square root of three. Another way that some people like to think of it is it's the opposite of positive numbers. So if I had those same numbers, if I had 1.732 and I had one, if I was looking at the positive numbers, 1.7 is going to be bigger than 1.0. It's the exact opposite if we're looking at the negative numbers. So if you want to think of it as positive numbers first and then just flip the inequality, you can do that as well. However you want to look at that. We're going to do a couple more examples that have negatives in there so we can talk about it. All right, so on this one, I have to evaluate both of them. So remember, in order to get a fraction into a decimal, I have to divide. So if I take 45 divided by 6, I get 7.5. I also have to evaluate the square root of 56, and I get 7.483, and then that keeps going forever and ever. So now I can compare these. Well, they both have sevens in the one spot. So I have to move to the next digit to decide which one is bigger and which one is smaller. So is the five bigger than the four or is the four bigger than the five, okay? Hopefully you know that five is bigger than four. So the alligator eats the bigger number. So 45 over six is greater than square root of 56. All right, remember at any point in time, pause it if you're not understanding something, okay? All right, so here's another negative one. So if I have the negative square root of 38, so go ahead and type that in. I get negative point, sorry, negative 6.16, and some more numbers after there. And for 40, square root of 42, I get negative 6.48, and then lots of numbers. All right, so with negative numbers, okay, the smaller the number, the bigger the value, okay? <clears throat> or if you want to think of them as positive and then flip the sign once you've made your decision, either way will work, okay? They both have sixes in the one spot, so I have to move to the tenths place to decide. Now, since these are both negative, it's going to be the opposite. So, usually we're looking for the bigger number. Well, 4 would normally be bigger than 1 if we were talking about positive numbers. But since they're negative, we have to reverse that. So, 4 is normally bigger than 1, but since it's negative, 1 would be bigger than 4. So, that means that the bigger number is going to be the negative square root of 38. If you like to think of them as positive, you can do that. You just have to remember to flip the sign. So if we were looking at the positive numbers, 4 is bigger than 1, so that would be your answer. But since it's not, you have to flip-flop it. So 
since we added the negative, you have to change the sign so that it eats the correct number. If that whole negative number thing is confusing for you, you have to come and talk to me about this, okay? It's so important that you understand the negative and positive numbers. Remember that a good note-taking strategy is when I put a problem up here, you pause the video and you see if you can do it correctly on your own. Because I'm going to walk you through it and tell you the correct answer eventually. <laughs> so see if you can get it right before I do. All right, so we need to evaluate the negative square root of 49. And the negative square root of 49 is negative 7. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and put the point zero on there so that it, these two numbers look alike. Because they both have a negative 7, so that means I have to look to the next digit to be able to order it, or to be able to compare it. Now we have to be careful because, again, these are both negative numbers. So on negative numbers, I'm actually looking for the smaller value, the smaller digit, because that's going to actually be bigger. Or you can think of it on the positive side and then flip it. So normally, 1 would be bigger than 0 if we were talking about positive numbers, but since it's um, a negative number, we have to flip-flop that. So normally 1 is bigger than 0, but for negatives, 0 is going to be bigger than 1. So that means the negative square root of 49 is bigger than or greater than negative 7.1. All right, hopefully that's enough um, examples for you to start understanding comparing. So I'm going to give you go ahead and complete these examples.